Good morning to one and all. Today's lecture topic is the complete cast metal crown preparation. Okay, so coming to the advantages, guys. Um, first of all, the advantages are because all axial surface of the tooth are involved in the preparation, a complete cast crown has greater retention than a conventional restoration, right? So a crown will definitely more be more retentive, right? Okay, normally a cast crown preparation also has greater resistance form um, than the partial coverage restoration of the same teeth. We have talked about principles of tooth preparation, right? And we have learned that full coverage crowns, full veneer crowns do have better retention, uh, resistance. Uh, the strength of the cast, complete cast crown is superior than the other restorations, right? Because it encircles the whole teeth and it has the corrugations of, on the crucial surface. So it is um, more superior strength-wise as well, okay? A com uh, coming to the fourth point, a complete cast crown allows the operator to modify axial tooth contour, right? Which is significant and it can help us to align the malaligned teeth okay although the extent of possible recontouring is limited to their parental durations okay uh, when special requirements exist for axial contours such as when retainers are needed for partial removal denture that is the cpd guys the cause partial dentures right the complete crown is often the only restoration that allows necessary modifications for the creation of uh, either rest, guide planes, or survey lines, guys. Yeah, shaped survey lines. So you can see that occlusional rest has been created on the premolars, guys. Yeah. And this is, in such cases, it's easier to do, guys. Yes, we try and avoid not to give it on the crowns, but um, yes, it is more easier to do. Yeah, so seen in this photograph okay and you can see that the occlusion will is also proper okay the restoration permits easy modification of the occlusion right uh which is often difficult to accomplish in other type of restorations right okay coming to the disadvantages um because all coronal surfaces are involved in the preparation for complete cast crown removal of tooth structures extensive right and definitely it gives a adverse effects to the pulp and periodontia, right? Because of the proximity of the margin to the gingiva, it is not uncommon to see gingival inflammation. So yes, gingival inflammation can be seen, okay? And uh, after cementation, it is no longer feasible to perform electric vitality testing of the abutment teeth, yeah? Uh, the conductivity of metal interferes with the test, guys, right? So for future complications, um, yes, the thermal test occasionally yields information. Otherwise, you'll have to just see it in an IOP or cut and remove the crown. Yeah. Uh, another disadvantage is that patient may object to the display of metal associated with complete crown, um, complete cast crown, um, especially in the normal smile line, right? So it should be restricted to the posterior teeth where usually we are not able to see um, uh, normally, guys. Okay, coming to the indications. So the complete cast crown is indicated on teeth that, that exhibit extensive coronal destruction where caries or trauma. Um, so it is indicated in those places. Um, it is... The choice of restoration whenever maximum retention resistance is required, okay? Again, going back to the principles of tooth preparation that we already covered. On short clinical crowns or when high displacement forces are anticipated, also this works well. Also, it can be fabricated when correction of axial contours is not feasible with more conservative techniques, okay? Uh, coming to more indications, the restorations also may be used to support partial removal denture like you just saw. Okay, 
in the earlier photo, the minimal dimension required for occlusal restful partial removal dental prosthetic framework necessitates removing significant amount of enamel if the dentine is exposed, restoring the tooth with the cast crown. Okay. So that is also one of the um uh one of the other points yeah one of the other uh, indications guys yeah uh coming to the last indication it is a, of course indicated endodontically treated teeth its superior strength compensates for the loss of teeth structure that results from previous restoration or carious lesions and endodontic access okay coming to the contraindications um it is contraindicated uh if treatment objectives can be met with more conservative restorations, okay? So if a better restoration can be done, a better crown, like porcelain fused metal or all ceramic, they should always be preferred. A wherever an intact buckle or lingual wall exists, um, use of partial coverage restoration should be considered, right? Um, so wherever these wall exists, we should not be using this full coverage crown. In particular, if less than maximum retention resistance are needed, a preparation more conservative to tooth structure is called for. Similarly, if an adequate buccal contour exists or can be obtained from enamel modification, enamelplasty, this is not indicated this crown, okay? If a high aesthetic need exists, especially in tears, it is definitely contraindicated, guys. Yeah, it's a metal. Okay, so now coming to the criteria of preparation, guys. Um, the closure reduction must allow adequate room for restorative material from which the cast crown is to be fabricated, okay? Minimum recommendation clearance for non-functional, non-centric cusp is 1 mm. And for functional or centric cusp is 1.5 mm. The occlusion reduction should follow normal anatomic contours to remain as conservative as of tooth structure as possible. Okay. Axial reduction should be parallel um, to the long axis of the tooth, but should allow a recommended six degree taper or convergence. Okay. The margin should be chamfer configuration, right? This is important, guys. Should be located supragingivally, right? Or in the case we teach you, equigingivally. Okay. The chamfer should be smooth and distinct and allow for approximate 0.5 mm of metal thickness at the margin, right? Okay. Coming to beveling and margins. So you have a functional cusp bevel and non-functional cusp bevel. At least 1.5 mm of occlusal current should be given and the beveling has to be done at an angle of 45 degrees, okay? Non-functional, non-centric cusp bevel, a minimum of 0.6 mm of clearance is needed here for adequate strength, okay? And the margin is chamfer configuration, right? So it should have 0.5 mm um, in developing the optimum axial contour. Okay, so here you can see um, the functional cusp uh, buckle of the mandibular, okay, and the uh, lingual of the maxillary, the palatal of the maxillary, right? So 1.5 here, guys, 1.5 here because it's functional, non-functional cusp, 1 mm, 1 mm, margin is 0 0.5 mm, okay? Preparation. The clinical procedure to prepare um, a tooth for the complete cast crown consists of following steps. Occlusal guiding grooves, occlusal reduction, axial alignment grooves, axial reduction, finishing, and evaluation, guys, okay? And the arm, first we'll discuss the arm area, okay? So usually you're using the tapered carbide burr, right? Shown here in the photo or diamond and narrow and round tipped this is the narrow and round, round tipped guys okay used for grooves additional retention occlusal reduction 
wide round tipped tapered diamond right this is the fine grit guys okay uh fine grit is the yellow members okay this is for finishing okay not given in the photo uh utility wax wax caliper if required for occlusal clearance right high or lower speed contra angle hand pieces okay so this these are the burrs right okay so basically the same thing yeah okay to ensure that the centric or functional cusp will be protected by an adequate thickness of metal place the functional cusp bevel in the area of contact with the opposing teeth okay so at the area of contact you're supposed to place the depth of the guiding groove should be slightly less than 1.5 mm why because when you merge the grooves it should look even guys okay uh, use of guiding grooves to ensure that occlusion reduction follows anatomical configuration so the anatomy of the teeth has to be preserved right it has to be reduced again i'm repeating guys but it has to look a miniature form of the same big teeth a groove should be placed in the low point and the high point of the cusp right so in two angulations guys right um so the points uh then can be connected well okay correct up the 0.8 mm for the central groove and non-functional cusp and 1.3 mm for the functional cusp okay Coming to the occlusal reduction, complete the occlusal reduction in two steps by a car carbide or a narrow round end tapered diamond. Have the occlusion surface is reduced first and the other one is maintained for reference. So that is the actual standard way of doing it. Okay. On completion, it can be checked. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it can be checked for minimum clearance on 1.5 mm on functional cusp and 1 mm on non-functional cusp, okay? The patient should be told to close this layer of utility wax in intercusp patients. So I'll just be showing you a photograph, okay? Place the wax back in the patient's mouth, tell the patient to bite on removal. Thickness of the utility wax is again measured and then you can see if there is clearance or not okay so usually it should not perforate if it perforates that means there's no clearance okay so there you prepare half and you leave half and then you join it so you have a reference point guys okay that's how you ideally standardly do it there are more methods to do it guys um again you can note the angulation so all the cusp and the grooves are not flattened guys yeah so they're actually like letting the anatomy relate guys okay so you tell the patient to bite on the wax and then you can see that there's there's no perforation that means the clearance clearance is sufficient guys you there are wax calipers that you can measure from but otherwise we can see um a clearance okay alignment groups for axial reduction uh after the occlusion reduction is completed Three alignment grooves are placed in each buccal and lingual wall with a narrow round and tapered diamond. Um, one is placed in the center of the wall and one each on mesial and distal transitional line angle. Okay, so when these guiding grooves are placed, um, they should be placed such that there are six degree tapered guys. Okay. Do not let the diamond burr cut into the tooth beyond the point where the tip is buried. Otherwise, it will really lead to overreduction and unsupported tooth enamel, right, guys? So, gingivally, the resulting depth of the alignment groove should be no more than one half the width of the tip of the diamond. Okay, guys? I'll be showing you photos in the coming slides. The alignment grooves determine the path of placement of the restoration. Okay, so it should be guys. Okay, so you can see these are the alignment grooves for the axial reduction. Okay, so this is how you place grooves, guys. Right on the buckle and the lingual surface, and then you can reduce guys. Right. Okay. Um. It, this is just showing clinically the same thing guys okay so that's how you do it and then you know how much you reduce guys you're not supposed to take the whole structure out guys right okay axial reduction the
the technique for axial reduction is similar to that of occlusion reduction. The remaining island of tooth structure between the um, alignment grooves are removed while the chamfer margin is being placed, okay? And the same narrow, round, and tapered is used for the procedure, okay? As with the occlusion reduction, perform the axial reduction for half the tooth at a time and maintain the other half for reference, okay? So once you make the grooves, do the reduction, guys, okay? So now this step is known as axial reduction. We have merged that, okay? And we have kept one point as reference, all right? And this is what it's showing in the patient's one. There, guys, okay? The same thing in the patient's one. <coughs> Uh, cut into the proximal area of both the sides until only a few mm uh, of the interproximal island remains. This area can be removed and broken contact by thinner tapered diamond, right? So a thinner tapered diamond can be used, a needle shaped bird can be used, and then the unsupported enamel can be just broken off by the probe like we have showed you in the demos here. <coughs> Sorry guys. Um, place the cervical chamfer concurrently with axial reduction, okay? So its width is approximately 0 0.5 mm, right? So it has adequate bulk of metal at the margin, okay? <coughs> also, the chamfer must be continuous and smooth, guys, all over. Also, you can see the thickness of the chamfer margin, guys, all around, yeah? Okay? Yeah. Uh, coming to the last few slides, guys, um, finishing has to be done, obviously, with the uh, smooth, continuous, uh, the preparation has to be smooth and continuous, guys, so it will be easy for impression making, wax investment, um, casting fabrication, so these are the lab procedures, once you send the preparation to the lab, or the lab does these procedures, right, life will be easier for them as well, so... <clears throat> Use of a fine grid diamond or a carbide burr of slightly greater, greater diameter uh, for finishing the chamfer, chamfer can be used, yeah? Okay, so as you can see in the photo that um, the lingual and the occlusal surface are being um, finished, okay? So this is basically a polishing where all the line angles, point angles have to be round, nothing can be flat. Everything has to be intact, guys, and contact has to be broken. Margin has to be clear. It has to be at the correct location, the margin. All the irregularities have to be removed. Okay? So the crown prep is complete. And yes, it was probably a carious teeth which was first restored. And then um, uh, the crown preparation was done, guys. Okay? Okay, so we finished all the prepared surfaces and round off all the line angles. Um, a wider diamond is recommended for smoothing out the unwanted ripples on the axial reduction and which eliminates any unsupported enamel at the margin, okay? So a placement of any retentive features, grooves or boxes, if you want, can be done. So here is... Um, example of groups which are just created there guys on top of the prepared structures so um we do have a more proper retention of the crown guys okay all right okay so guys uh, that's all and this is a completed preparation which is characterized by a smooth even chamfer and um, six degree taper and gradual transi transition between all the prepared surfaces okay so you can see the beveling guys at 45 degree angle you can appreciate all of that okay okay guys um this is the bibliography um schillenberg and rosenstiel remain the standard textbooks guys um this is from rosenstiel guys so um you can also refer to schillenberg and for any further questions, so please come and see me. Yeah. Thank you.